After reaching the top of the series of stairs, Han headed over to where Idranus was standing. Her figure looked different from the one at the base of the wall. Before, it looked confident and able to stand against anything, but now there was a sense of acceptance. Standing next to her, they overlooked the forest that surrounded the city. There was a certain sense of majesty as if they were looking at a world from the height of a mountain. You do not think you are going to be able to hold them off, huh? He asked her as he watched birds flying by. Instead of answering him, Igenus continued to stay silent. You could always evacuate everyone while you still have time, he casually mentioned. Where would you have us go? And how do you expect to move an entire city when the overflow could be happening at any moment? Do you think there would be another place that would accept us when they are barely prepared? Whether they are towns, villages, or cities, they only gather and store enough for their own people, let alone the thousands of people here. She spat at his naive thinking. Does the priestess know? He watched the trees sway after a gentle breeze blew by. She probably thinks the same thing, Idrenus admitted. What is different about this time, Han probed. How much do you know about the gods? A random question was asked to him. Not much, he answered her. Did you know that there were some people who admit a strange presence around them? She paused and waited for Han to digest this information. These people do not appear different from anyone else and are usually the most innocent looking people. They could be your neighbor, friend, parent, anyone. Our city back then was tiny. It was a traditional looking city where we hunted what was in the forest and would trade with merchants. Idrenus continued, half rambling. It was not until the priestess arrived with her family. They were forced out of their village and traveled with some merchants. Initially, they were doing poorly, but over time, they started to thrive. Interesting to learn that the priestess was some normal village girl, Han commented, waiting to hear more. Yes, though she was far from normal, Idronus agreed with him. I was a knight in training back then and would often pass by their shop. They owned a restaurant serving a variety of foods. On my way to train, I would stop by and grab food to eat. The stuff they sold was delicious, completely different from what others served. She chuckled as she thought back to that period. I became familiar with the priestess and befriended her. She was several years younger than me and was very shy and reserved. It took several months for her to become more outspoken with me. I remember playing with her one day and asking how her parents were able to cook such delicious foods. Did they have some kind of cooking technique? He asked her, curious about where this was heading. Idrona shook her head, saying, The priestess looked worried at that moment, and only after reassuring her that nothing would happen did she tell me her family's secret. They gained the ability to discern the truth in things. This allowed them to pick out superior ingredients and to understand the best way to go about cooking. It sounded like some fantastical thing. Her voice reflected the amazement she had towards the priestess, but later changed. I found out that the other villagers learned of this ability and cast them out. Considering that there is magic, I do not see why they would do such a thing. Han was confused, trying to understand what was being said. You would think that, I Idronis agreed. It was not until later that I started to connect things happening in the city with how the priestess was acting. There were times when she would become frightened by a harmless appearing individual. 
This reaction was strange due to how much she had opened up to others. Kids would often come around and play with her. It was only certain times where she would shy away from certain people. When I asked why she was scared, the priestess told me that those people looked strange. Was she able to sense something about them? He was focused on what Idrenus was telling him now. Yes, now we know these people as those touched by the gods, like the one in your group. Believing in what the priestess was telling me, I went to my commander and after many months, I was able to convince the commander to have soldiers spy on these people. We later learned that these people would often be up to mischief, causing important things to crumble. An experiment to help improve the city would suddenly fail. Each of these events was caused by them. After surveilling them, we were able to remove them from the city slowly. As the number of them decreased, the city began to improve. It was very minor things, like the food quality improving and stores becoming more successful, she explained. Sounds like everything turned out well for the city, he said, though he sensed that things didn't work out well in the end. The city did improve, but those touched by the gods realized who was responsible for outing them. We did not expect them to go after the priestess and her family, so there were no guards placed to protect them. Idrena's voice became thick with emotions. They burned down the house they were living in. I just happened to be on my way to give the priestess a gift I purchased when I saw the smoke rising in the distance. Han remained silent, watching tears flow down Idrena's face. In front of the burning house, I called out to her to warn her that the house was on fire. I worried that they could not hear me, so I crashed through the front door and raced up the stairs. Going up those stairs felt like an eternity, thinking that she had already perished. Reaching the priestess's room, I quickly opened the door and was faced with the image of her laying on the bed. She looked like a princess in a deep sleep, like in those stories. As everything around us was on fire and my throat felt hot, I rushed to her side and tried to wake her up. I begged her to open her eyes as I shook her, not wanting to face my fears. I picked her up and ran towards the window in her room and jumped out of the house. Though the fall hurt, I made sure to keep her safe. There were people outside watching the house burn down. I cried out for a healer and luckily there was one in the crowd. Seeing that she was being taken care of, I tried to rush back in to save her parents. Before I could even take a few steps towards the house, I was tackled by those around me who saw what I was about to do. Her voice became angry as she snarled. I watched as her house burned down. I let her parents die. I could have made it in there and saved them. Listening to Idrenus' story, Han understood what had happened and also why the city was going to fall. The gods had likely decided which locations would thrive and would send their minions to make sure that their decisions were followed. Seeing that the priestess and her family could be a threat to their mission, the followers of the gods decided to eliminate them. With the priestess's help, we were able to remove all of them from the city. We even began research into weapons to fight off the overflow with the assistance from our sister city. Her voice became bitter. If it were not for this overflow, our weapons and defenses would have been completed. It seems like the gods discovered what we were up to. What they did not count on was the priestess's ability to sense when the overflow would occur. I initially thought that we would have a chance considering how much we were able to prepare compared to the previous times, but it looks like this time is different. 
We always suspected that the gods used the overflow as a weapon against us, but we never had proof. It looks like our suspicions were correct. What about the weapons and defenses? He asked her. Surely you were able to complete a few of them. Yes, there are a few that were completed, but they will likely not be enough. The visions the priests have been having have become progressively worse. This means not only is the overflow close, but also that the severity is beyond what we expected. She grinned at the idea of how petty the gods were. Sounds like you guys are giving up, he mocked her. One of her hands flashed towards the front of his shirt and pulled him up towards her. Give up? You do not know what you are even saying, she spat at him. Of course we are not giving up. Do you know what she had to go through? The suffering those pieces of shits who call themselves gods put her through? I am going to make sure that each one of those monsters understands what they are facing. At least you are not crying anymore, he grinned at her. I joined his side as she let go of his shirt. I also feel bad for your group, who have arrived at this location only to be devoured. The least we can do is help defend this place from those creatures, right? He laughed. She shook her head, trying to understand what was going through his mind. How can you be so cheerful? I have learned that not all things are what they seem when you first look at them. Even if you do get overwhelmed, I am confident that the battle will be to such a degree that future civilizations will talk about it. Han looked at Idronus with complete seriousness in his voice. Though I've only known you for a short time, I am glad to have met you, E. Idronus slapped him on his back as the two laughed on top of the wall. So which of them is yours? Idronus asked, trying to change the mood to one much lighter. What do you mean? Han replied. Idrenus stared up towards the sky in frustration. I mean about the women in your group. What makes you think any of them are interested in me? He asked coyly. I am guessing you want me to ignore how happy they all look when approaching you, she teased. Han turned his back towards the scene in front of the wall and took a seat on the edge of it. I guess you could say all of them, he said simply. I do not know whether it is the fact you are claiming all of those girls as yours or the cocky look on your face, but I have this desire to punch that face of yours, she joked with him. I feel the same way sometimes. I often think of how lucky I am to be surrounded by women who feel that way towards me. He grinned as he thought about what the girls were up to. You better not break any of their hearts, she warned him casually. Han nodded his head, thinking about all of them. For a moment, he thought about Hai Yun and that night where she cried. He didn't understand why he was thinking of her at that moment. Screams could be heard, waking up Hai Yun from her slumber. Being woken up suddenly left her feeling disoriented, trying to understand what was happening. The last thing she remembered was walking around the city, taking in the sights, enjoying the casual and cheerful feeling. Hearing her screaming, Hai Yun quickly put on her clothes and weapon holders. Making sure that all of her weapons were secured, she rushed down the hallway. All the doors were already open, where Celestra, Han, and his servants were staying in the various rooms. The doors to the other students were still closed. Wanting to figure out what was happening first, before alerting her students, she rushed down the stairs. Exiting the inn, People were running and screaming. It took her a few moments to realize that something was wrong. 
Ignoring the people, Haiyun looked around at the different buildings trying to figure out what was different. As she was looking around, she was getting a sense of dread building up. Like a thunderclap, Haiyun looked up at the sky and saw that it looked blood red, as if the sky was bleeding.